I want to kick off with a quick poll, and I'm curious to understand how you've handled the home office situation and how you've experienced this change, assuming, of course, this was a change for you. Um, so, hands to heart, how productive are you in home office? Did you become more productive? Is it the same for you? Or do you find difficulties to motivate yourself in that setting? And um, really curious to hear, Chris, if you have any results back. Um, it's the first comment that I want to make in general. I always find it interesting to see that we all experience the same sort of change. Of course, this is different per situation. Give the example, for instance, if you have children at home and you work at home, or if you don't. Uh, but in general, I find it interesting that we all experience a change in a different way. So curious to see what the outcome of this poll will be. So at the moment, um, and folks are still coming in, so audience do do keep going on that poll. Um, we've got 40% working a lot more productively, uh, pr productively. 20% uh, are same, same, and 40% I can't motivate myself. I don't even know where to start. So uh, that's just changed a little bit, working a lot more. Uh, productivity is 50% now, um, same same is about 16% and can't motivate myself is 33 so uh, working better is, is in the lead at the moment uh, followed by can't motivate myself and a little bit of same same. Yeah, yeah really interesting actually. Uh, personally if, if I look at myself I also feel that I became more productive, uh, I can do just more deep work, being less distracted. But I personally, I do miss that energy and that collaboration of being at the office. So I think my ideal scenario would be sort of hybrid setting. And personally, I haven't been to an office since November last year. So thank you all for that input. And hi, everyone. As mentioned, my name is Lars Bohm. Uh, I lead the Benelux expansion at Personio. Uh, before joining Personio, I've led one of the biggest project teams at LinkedIn, supporting companies building and foster their employer brand. And before that, I've had my own tech startup. And today I'm going to tell you more about digital transformation and how this can help to build, improve and scale your people processes. And for anyone who doesn't know Personio yet, uh, we support SMB organizations automating all their HR processes. Uh, we're actually quite a young company. We were founded in Munich in 2015, uh, but we're currently one of the fastest growing companies in Europe. Uh, we now have offices in Munich, Dublin and uh, London and Madrid. Um, and I just relocated back out of Munich to the Netherlands since we are planning to open up our Benelux office in Amsterdam later this summer. And at Personio, we believe that people are the single biggest influencer on the success of any business. Uh, but I'm curious to see if you agree with this statement. So let's do another poll, Chris. What do you think is most important for a company? Is it uh, us, the people? Is it earnings and revenue? Or is it beating the competition? And I must say that none of these answers are wrong, but I'm curious to see what pops up to mind first uh, when you see this. So the people coming in at 70%, earnings of revenue coming in at just under 30%. It's pretty strong on the people, um, but with a few saying earnings of revenue as well, and no one saying beating competitors. It's evening out a bit now, the people a bit more on earnings and revenue. Uh, but I think it's safe to say the people's just got this around 60% and earnings and revenue 40% with no one uh, saying about the competitors. I don't know if that's honest or not. <laughs> <laughs> I do think it's, uh, it's, it's at least a positive mindset, in my opinion, to, uh, to focus on that. Uh, actually, it's an interesting outcome. Uh, I do believe with uh, uh, such a strong field of uh, participants in, in the HR field, um, I also think none of these are, are wrong, right? But I do believe that uh, people are um, really important for us. Because if, if we look at like what the success factor number one, I do believe it's our employees. Um, it's, it's at the beginning them who create innovation. So they think about new ideas that can add value within a market. It's them, again, who create the product or a service, who then go out and market and sell it. And again, it's the employees who take care of the customer and drive value on an ongoing basis. Um, so I think it's fair to say that people are the lifeblood of our organizations. And then when you think how whole, all of those employees in the business are empowered and enabled, that's actually done by the HR team. It's done by you and your team. After all, it's, it's the HR team who recruits the people into the business it's you and your team who go out, search for the right candidates, interview them, lead them throughout the recruitment process, 
make sure they stay engaged throughout that process. And when a hire is done successfully, you make sure they get onboarded successfully, that they get acclimatated into the business, that they can become productive uh, as, as fast as possible, and then make sure that they have a right, uh, great workplace. And workplace these days is not only at an office, for instance, but also workplace being from home. And then when that's set up, it's again you and the team who focus on employee development and career progression. And something that specifically even last year, even more, it was already a trend that we focus on more from an HR department is the mental health and well-being of employees uh, became more and more important. And it's again you and the team who support that. And even when you've done all of that, in the end, it's again you who define company, people strategy and advise the management how to move forward. So personally, I think it's fair to say that uh, the HR team and you and the team are the true heroes uh, of the company. But in reality, however, we see that HR teams struggle uh, to focus on value adding and strategic tasks. HR teams are often or far too often overloaded with administrative tasks like, for instance, coordinating interviews, approving absences, sending out reminders, coordinating sickness notification, um, just to name but a few. And hopefully you can't relate too much to these two uh, on this slide. Um, but I'm curious to understand how many sticky notes and reminders you currently have manually set right now. So let's do another poll, Chris. Uh, is it uh, A, none? Uh, is it one to 10 or can't you even count it anymore? I'm really curious to see how digitalized you are with this. So around 50% none, 25% one to 10, 25% can't even count. Yeah, this, it actually is positive to see um, that they actually, uh, if it's none, then uh, I would expect that uh, people uh, who answer that have digitalized or made at least those first steps. Um, but actually out of, out of research, um, it came that 43% of the time HR people are spending is on admin tasks. And if you think about what that means, that is more than two full working days if you work on a full-time basis. And in general, the larger your company gets, the more overwhelming and complex these tasks become. And even last week, one of the people in my team uh, spoke to a company where this is even up to 80%. And, and personally, I've been working with more, for more than 10 years with HR leaders and experts uh, within different roles. And I, I don't think I've ever met um, somebody from the HR field that actually joined or went into that field of work because they like admin work so much. Um, but what I do see is that there's a lot of passion to make positive impact on employees' life, careers, and help the business to progress. And I do believe, and I think already part of, of this group has made those first steps, or maybe even is very far with those steps, because the solution is not that difficult. It's, it's digitalization, right? And hopefully after doing that, you look as happy as her. But often yet HR department is what we see is that they are the department that is digitalized in most companies the last. Um, most times what we hear is that HR is far too often still seen as a cost center. Um, and therefore many parts of the business have great tools in place, uh, but HR is still swamped with paperwork and admin work on that side. And yet the past year made everything even more challenging with so many more additional tasks to steer your company throughout that crisis. And actually the good news is that although COVID came of course with a lot of hardship and challenges, it also provided us with the opportunity to digitalize our business and workflows, which enabled, uh, of, which is understandable, right? Since the manual processes uh, no longer worked in the remote setting. And if you haven't seized this opportunity for your HR department to digitalize, my advice here is you want to take action since this is the moment to do it. So if you need to make that first step, do it. If you already digitalize part of your department or part of the processes, take it to the next level. And this is crucial for the success of the department and your company to stay relevant and to unlock uh, the productive potential. And if you look at HR and HR transformation, uh, digitalization will help you to transform HR from a one-side reactive operational approach to a proactive strategic approach. And that last approach can add a lot more value to the company. 
And by digitalizing your people processes, you make them run smoother, more efficiently, which gives you more time to focus on things that have an impact, like, for instance, the employees themselves. And I think, for instance, a good example of that digitalization, that first step is, for instance, holiday requests. Like I've worked at one of my previous company where it was a lot of back and forth via email uh, towards my manager, uh, HR and finance. Um, which was already partly digital, right? Because it was by email and Excel documents that it was updated. But these days you can do this just via an app. Like we provide, for instance, ourselves a solution where people via or employees via app can see the holiday balance that they have. They can request an absence. I, as a manager, can approve it. And HR doesn't need to even get bothered with it. Uh, you would just have an overview of the absence balance. When digitalization has happened, you can actually focus on optimization of your process. And so, for example, you can focus on that automated onboarding process to actually improve it, to improve employee retention, for instance, or increase the speed of productivity uh, because you've improved that process. And then finally, this digital transformation will provide you with people analytics that enable you to make well-founded data-driven decision and recommendations. Decisions that can support the satisfaction of your employees and the success of the business. Um, and furthermore, it, it will give you a lot more control there. Um, and I, I think in that sense, like digital transformation is crucial if you and the team want to be a strategic partner for the business. Uh, and which in my opinion is actually, it isn't a want. I, I absolutely believe it's a need uh, to be more adaptive to a changing environment. I also believe that last year there was a lot of change. And I think when looking at the future, we need to ask ourselves, what changes have we implemented that we want to keep? And on the other hand, where should we learn more about digitalization and how this can help to unlock our productive potential? And I want to actually provide you with three key takeaways here. So the first one is more focused on, on people well-being. Um, I believe that maintaining and nurturing your company culture is essential because decreased motivation, poor uh, mental and physical well-being, uh, and for instance, burnouts are the things employees see as the biggest obstacle to be truly productive. So it's crucial to keep employees motivated, uh, healthy, and engaged. And you can do this by creating strong company culture where people are motivated to live the company values, which provide them uh, with a sense of belonging. And this sense of belonging will make them more resilient, motivated, and productive. And we also seen on efforts that employees actually became more productive uh, last year, um, which is positive. And we just saw that in the poll as well, that most say that they became more productive. Not everyone, of course. But we also seen that the amount of stress increased and more people uh, were at risk of uh, getting overworked. And a couple of recommendations that I want to provide is to set a better balance is the first one is give your employees option for self-care taking. So two initiatives that we started off with, for instance, were uh, providing self-care days. So employees could get some additional uh, holidays to actually um, focus on, on self-care taking and get some headspace. But we also provided some additional uh, budget for taking, for instance, yoga lessons, meditation lessons, or whatever people wanted to do to create some more uh, yeah, balance in their lives. The other side is you can also give your employees time to prepare for calls. Don't schedule back-to-back -back meetings and, and be firm on that. But also, if you look at meetings in general, keep them as short as possible and as long as necessary and have a clear agenda set. So I would say like key takeaway here is you want to set a clear focus on the employee, the culture and your HR strategy and within that. Then the second part is more about people efficiently. Um, I think the, the main advice that I want to give here is you want to avoid attention fragmentation and micro delays. Like attention and focus are our personal core tools to uh, be productive. And so what is attention fragmentation? Uh, the, the idea behind the technician fragmentation is that being interrupted, even a tiny interruption, creates a cluster of distractions that takes your attention and splits it into multiple pieces. 
Um, it takes time to get back into the flow. It and that matters because your attention is everything, right? Uh, and it's how you uh, focus your time to be productive. And a loss of attention bears both uh, psychological as well as a business cost. And that all starts with something what I like to call a micro delay. So what's a micro delay? Um, let me give you an example here. Like you are at work, you're behind your computer, you're hard at work at on a, a specific project and a notification pops up on your screen. You need to provide feedback on an important presentation. And next you get an email uh, that you have a performance review that you need to complete. Then your phone bosses, or you need to review a handful of vacation requests. You have all of those distractions coming at you from all different angles. And each one represents a micro delay. And although they seem small and maybe innocent, they have a cumulative effect across the business. Uh, in fact, research showed that they can be quantified. And on average, a micro delay uh, costs about uh, somewhere around 20 minutes. And that's a lot of time, in my opinion, because these happen more frequently during the day. And if you add that up with all the different employees, that's a big impact. So what you can do to actually support this, I would say focus on deep work. Um, you want to learn the people to have the structure-free working environment that can be at work, but of course also give advice on how they can do that at home. Um, make it also okay to have focus hours. For instance, within my team, I'm completely fine if people are not online on Slack, for instance, because they just want to do some deep work and get work done. But also let them manage notification settings uh, in an efficient way. Just to give an example, I don't get any pop-ups from Slack or email, just for the sake that I don't want to be distracted at first, but on the other side, I also want to be proactive in my approach instead of reactive on everything that pops up on my screen. So enabling focus time for you and your colleagues here is essential. And then lastly, this is more um, focused on uh, company efficiency. Use your digital tools effectively. Jumping back and forth between different tools in general is very time consuming and it interrupts a working process. And the solution for more growth is in generally not more tech and sometimes it's even less tech, uh, but more efficiently. And creating a seamless and streamlined workflow is essential in that sense. So when selecting, for instance, a new tool or new technology, I think you want to look at a couple of, of uh, questions that you want to ask yourself. First of all, you want to ask yourself the question, is this technology siloed? Is it another place to log in? Or is it another user experience? Um, is it this distraction that, con uh, that, that constant, uh, constantly notifying people, for instance, causing those micro delays? Or is it overly prescriptive, forcing people uh, to work in one way and one way only? And I think it's crucial to zero in on personal benefits for your employees in terms of time saved or other added values if you want them to adopt this new solution. And that way, you not only they not only start using it because it was mandated, but they continue using it because they see the value of that. So the takeaway here is it's, it's not simply about digitalizing work. It's about doing it so in a way that it keeps the human element on top of mind. And for this to work, you need to really focus on the right tools to design human centric workflows. And this way, your solutions are exactly that. Uh, they are solutions and they don't hold the workforce back. Instead, they help to unlock their productive potential. And this is exactly why Personio was founded. Uh, we provide a solution that is focused on the human-centric uh, work without distractions. And we do this by providing an all-in-one HR software solution that covers all the HR process from recruitment to onboarding, HR management, performance reviews, payrolling, etc. And therefore, the employees complete their absence request there in the same place, for instance, where they log, for instance, their notes of an interview they've taken. And if you're not yet convinced of digitalization of your HR processes, or you think this is something new, um, 
it actually was stated already in 2017 in, in a McKinsey report that I read recently. Um, if you haven't read it yet, I can highly recommend it. It's super interesting. It's uh, the report, the CEO's guide, uh, competing through HR, which states that HR must raise service levels and improve the employee experience using next generation automation tools and standard process to drive higher productivity. And I truly believe this creates a competitive advantage. So make sure you make that next step in your digitalization process, since this is crucial for the success of your company. I want to thank everyone for, for your attention. And before we leave it, let's uh, finish it off with one last poll. Um, and I'm curious to what you fear most about digitalizing uh, the HR. Uh, do you think it's too complicated? Do you think like data is not secure? Do you think it's too expensive and is it difficult to get that budget? Or do you actually like to do it, you haven't done it, or do you already have great tools in place? Um, really curious to hear this outcome and maybe this is a nice bridge to uh, the maybe some last questions in the Q&A session. Thanks so much, Lars. Great, great presentation, covered a lot there. I'm just waiting for those poll results to come in. Um, got some really good questions as well. We've only got around five minutes or so, so we'll we'll crack on um, with those. The poll results at the moment, what do you fear about uh, most about digitizing HR? 50% um, at the moment saying nothing, I'd love to have digital HR. 33% uh, saying it's too complicated. Uh, and a, around 16% it's too expensive. Uh, too complicated is just nipped in the equal lead with nothing. I'd love to have digital HR. Um, so it's, it's, it's a bit of a split, 50% uh, on wanting it uh, and about 40% saying it's too complicated and a further 10% saying expensive. Yeah, it's interesting, interesting outcome. Also, when you see that uh, first uh, response on uh, that there are not a lot of manual reminders set that actually, if you look at this poll, there is actually quite a big part of the group that actually haven't, mm -hmm. uh, maybe haven't done it yet. Um, yeah. So interesting, but uh, let's jump to the, to, to the questions that might be there for the last couple of minutes, Chris. Yeah, uh, we've, we've actually had a comment come through the chat from Maziar, we're using Personia already and loving it. So there's some, uh, <laughs> some great feedback within there. And uh, Maziar was also sharing uh, some images in the chat of uh, their sticky notes board. So uh, interesting, <laughs> to, interesting to see. Yeah. Uh, but let's back on because we've only got a few minutes here um, and some and some good questions. Um, Amelia, uh, why are lots, lot, lot of companies still using legacy in HR? Legacy uh, systems? old old outdated systems yeah i think uh main reason is uh, that comes back to what caroline said people resist sometimes change so that's yeah. the first part so there's a psychological element to it i do believe that uh, when we want to improve things we need to change things and that always comes with a pre-investment of time and effort before you get that win um, so it's most of the times the, it feels like the release resistant, but in the end you stay in that resistance of having that outdated solution. Yeah. Secondly, what I see with uh, outdated solutions is that they are um, in general quite difficult to set up. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore there has been a lot of time investment, money investment in there. So it's really difficult when you've so bought into that to actually leave a solution like that. Mm -hmm. Good answer. And then question from Pete, do you recommend regular employee feedback or questionnaires to understand which notifications or workflows are distracting or do you utilize data for this? I actually think that's, that's a really interesting uh, question and suggestion actually. Um, so we, we don't manage, so we do a lot of polls and engagement surveys. We actually, we don't ask too much about these part, but what I yeah. personally do within my team is that I recommend them to actually how they should use it, how they could use it, when specifically I see that people find it difficult to get their work done. And most of the time what I see is because they get distracted by everything that's happening within yeah. their home screen. So it's more of a personal element to it. But actually, I think it's a really interesting one that as a company, we should, but also other companies, I think you should uh, yeah. bring this top of mind and actually ask for that feedback. If you have tools that provide that data, that's nice. but I also think that the tools actually want you to be continuously up on top of them. So I don't know if a tool, for instance, like Slack will provide you with the data to actually show you how much yeah, yeah. distracted you get, right? Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, Georgia, how do you encourage deep work within a remote work setting given home distractions in addition to work ones? So you've got your notifications coming through on your computer and you've got your cat needing feeding or your child <laughs> screaming, that kind of thing. How do you kind of encourage that deep work element uh, in remote work? Yeah, I think it's it, it's in some cases difficult, right? Because it depends also on the home situation. But what you can do from an organizational perspective is is make recommendation on what is an ideal place to work. In general, it's without a lot of distraction. So sitting at the kitchen table where everything's happening within your home uh, is probably not the best way. So if you can create an office setting within your house, that is probably the first thing that you want to do. And the second piece, then more about the technology part. So technology makes it possible to get uh, con connect to people really easily, but you also want to be aware that it's not a distracting factor, but more an empowering factor, which also means that you you can provide actually a sort of roadbook, like how can you use your your uh, your your notification settings, for instance. Yeah, definitely. That's that's all we've got time for, um, Lars, um, for this session. Thanks so much for that, Lars. Really good presentation, really well-rounded. And uh, thanks for, for joining for that quick Q&A. And I'll, I'll see you in about 30 minutes' time. Thank you, Chris. See you there.